Welcome out everybody to game two of game, the three game conference um, against the SVU Knights and the Pfeiffer Falcons. Uh, we're getting ready to do the national anthem right now. All your starters for the Knights are coming out very shortly. And we're about to get the ball rolling. Looking for a better game than yesterday. The Knights kind of had a, a rough start yesterday, but hopefully we can bounce back here quick and turn this this conference series around for the Knights. It's Cubby Blackwell again from yesterday, and we've also got another commentator. Yeah, I'm Tyler Wright here again. So Pfeiffer comes in here with a nine and 10 record overall in the season, two and five so far on the conference, facing off against your Knights. Coming here with a four and 13 record, one and six so far on the conference this season. As you said, you know, the Knights fell 19 to seven against the Pfeiffer Falcons yesterday. And so you were here, you know, tell us a little about that game. You know, it was a rough game. I guess we'll, let's, let's listen to the national anthem. Yeah, so yesterday's game was a little rough. It was definitely windy, as these other guys can say. The wind was blowing strictly straight out from center field and left field, so it kind of gave Nick Danes and, and Benji Horsley a little bit of a rough time out here, and especially the first ball that was hit of the game by by Lloyd for the Knights went straight over the center fielder's head. So the wind was a big, a big issue yesterday for judging the ball in the outfield, but it seems like there isn't much today at all. That's right. It's a beautiful day to play baseball. Nice clear skies. Wind not really a factor today, so we'll see how these teams play here today for game two of the three-game series between the SVU Knights and the Pfeiffer Falcons. Looks like Zach Geertsen's pitching for the Knights. Excited to see what he's got in store. Is he? He's definitely added some depth to the to the SVU Knights. He's transferring in from the, from his JUCO as previously was said yesterday. So he's been pitching well for them, for them, so hopefully he can just bring that back, that same energy. There we go, a couple games ago against the Apprentice Builders, you know, Gearson started pitching. He had a pretty good game to start. He also hit that homer, so yes. he can be a threat both pitching and at bat. Yes, yesterday he did slightly struggle on the at the plate, but you know, today's a new day for some baseball. I was impressed though yesterday by the by the Falcons. They were very hard outs at the plate. They seemed to be very well coached and very well executed every play that they they did on the bases yesterday, creating that tremendous lead. Add to it every time. We do have a different catcher today. Looks like Robbie Stempton's behind the the plate for the Knights. So leading off for the Falcons today is number six, Zach Farrell. And pitch one is underway very shortly by Geertsen. And that first pitch comes in as a, a low ball. We're in that count at 1-0 and here at the top of the first inning. And 
And that ball was hit to Stockton Hall, who gets over and tosses it to Zach Geertsen, stepping on first base, getting the runner, that lead runner off for out number one. And that pitch was fouled straight back, bringing that count at 0-1. This is Wilson Lohr at bat number 28. He had two homers last game of the series. That was a ball outside. Bring that count at 1-1 one, one, with one out here. And that ball is lifted into right field. Ty Martinez seems to camp under it and gets that second out. Now at bat for Pfeiffer is Joe Javier, number 26, the sophomore from Concord, North Carolina. So is Pfeiffer, is Pfeiffer, is it a big school? Is it about like, kind of like us or what? Uh, it's slightly bigger than Southern Virginia, but it's still relatively small. That's a strike one for Geertsen. Seem to be a, some sort of off-speed pitch by Geertsen. That is strike number two. Hard foul ball hit towards the Falcons dugout. Need to be a heads up over there. And what was thought to be a no look strikeout was actually a ball. Bring that count at one and two for Geertsen. Two outs here. And that was another low ball. And that pitch was fouled straight back again, keeping that count at two and two. Knights bringing out the White and red pinstripe jerseys. Bottom and the top looks very well. And it looks like Pfeiffer's got their their gray jerseys on today. And that ball was fouled. And Stockton Hall makes the, the catch for the third out, what looks to be in foul territory. Pretty good inning for, for Geertsen, I would say. There we go. Not... Pretty good feeling there by the Knights, not allowing a hit, no bases. No runs on bases so far for the Knights outfield. Pitching for Pfeiffer today is Thad Lewis, beginning the game, the senior from Greenville, North Carolina. Looks like we got Lloyd and Martinez off to start this bottom of the first inning for the Knights. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was talking to my, my buddy Timothy last night kind of about some of the hits that were made here. The wind was just blowing out like crazy amounts and high speeds, and Nick Danes made a spectacular catch here in center field. What would have been a home run, and we all we all witnessed it. It was probably three or four feet out, and he was reached over, and it would have increased our lead by three runs, and he robbed it. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that many people saw that that hit or that catch, on just how difficult it actually was. But a lot of those balls were, they were hit hard, but they just kept carrying because of the wind. Pitch one underway. And that pitch is a strike, for strike one, a one count. And a big cut by Lloyd, bringing that count of 0-2. And that pitch is fouled off into the parking lot, keeping that count at 0-2. Lloyd had a pretty big day at the plate yesterday as he pieced a few balls and Hit a two-run home run also. And that ball is hit. Chopper to second baseman. As that is a routine ground ball for him. As a retired Lloyd for out number one. That pitch came in hot, but for ball one to Martinez. Martinez had a good day at the plate yesterday. I believe he had two or three hits, bringing in a few runs. Looked well on the bases. That pitch is in for a strike with a 1-1 one -one count. Ty Martinez, statistically one of the better hitters for the Knights with a 3.77 batting average and 20 hits on the season so far. As that ball is hit pretty hard to the second baseman as he fields it very nicely to retire Ty Martinez out for out number two. And as this brings up Garrett Stauffer, he got in yesterday as a defensive sub at third to replace Marcelino Leonardo Jr. At third, he's a, like we said yesterday, he's a freshman from Utah. As he takes strike one, that count 0 and 1. As he hits a ball to shortstop, as he fields it, throws across a diamond. Two retire Stauffer, four out, number three. Very good inning for the Falcons as they are up three, down three. While we change sides for the top of the second inning. So, so far in the game, both teams fielding pretty well. Um, both teams not having anything crazy happen at bat yet. So we'll see what happens here in the second inning. If you had to have one walk-up song, what would your walk-up song be, you think? Oh, I don't know. So do you have a walk-up song? I I did have a walk-up song, you know, but unfortunately I won't be able to to take the field this year due to injury. But my walk-up song was Champions. It was like a pump-up song by a a rapper called N.L.E. Choppa. N.L.E. Choppa, okay. It's uh. It's like a hype up song. It always got me excited to go up to the bats and everything, but probably keep it for next year. 
Let's say, do they? Does every player have like a walk-up song? I believe every player's got a walk-up song. Some have two. I I do believe that there is walk-up songs for pitchers. Um, you know, for when they're warming up and stuff like that. But I would say the Knights do have a pretty good selection of of music being played today. It's I'll think a, about that question. <laughs> we'll come back to you in a little while. And pitch number one of the top of the second. Thrown in for a strike by Geertsen. Big swing and a miss by the leadoff batter. Another big swing and a miss. Bring that count at 0-2 as Geertsen looks to retire this batter. And slightly misses outside with off speed. Gerson has a count of 1-2 now. Gerson looking di pretty dialed in today on the mound. Honestly, with both sides. And as Benji Horsley makes the the catch in left field with the oppo, oppo hit by the Falcons hitter, left-handed hitter, for out number one. That was C.J. Acosta just at bat. Now we'll be seeing Now we'll be seeing number five, Lackey, at bat for the Falcons. As he lays down a bunt, what seems to be foul, fielded by Coach Schlegg very nicely. That brings up strike one. And that's strike two. Zach Geertsen doing a fine job of getting ahead of the, the hitters today as he works with the 0-2 count again. As a high pitch is, is brought in there for count of one, two. And that pitch was delivered low. Count of two, two. And that hit was hit very softly to Mitch Smith, the second baseman for the Knights, as he retires that runner out at first to stock and all for out number two. Now at bat for the Falcons, number 55, Ben Barnes. Ben Barnes, a junior from New Jersey. As that ball is hit very well to right field, a two hopper to the fence. Ty Martinez gets it, throws it in to second as the left handed hitter for the Falcons has a stand up double for that inning. Barnes with a double, that'll be the first hit of the game. So Falcons with a man on second. In number 75. Turner is now at bat for Pfeiffer. As that pitch is thrown in there for a strike. And a borderline ball thrown in there for a ball one. Bring that count at one and one for Geertsen. As 
that pitch is fouled off into the parking lot. First strike number two. Yesterday we were talking about the jerseys for uh, for the Falcons. They were like a bright yellow and had some type of – that pitch is fouled straight back also, leaving that count one and two. They were like a bright yellow, and then they had like some type of stand and two Falcons were were standing um, on this that stick or something on the jerseys. It was it, They were pretty unique-looking jerseys, very, very bright yellow. Sounds nice. As that is a late call, strike three, retiring that that batter. Geertsen retires the Falcons for that sh for that out number three. As we come up to the bottom of the second inning, no runs scored. Still a zero zero ball game here for the Knights and the Falcons. Seems like we had 35 people here yesterday. Uh, do you know how many we've got today attending? About 30. About 30. It is a little earlier for, you know, some people, but maybe game game three today we'll start having a bigger crowd. So Thad Lewis will take the mound again for the Falcons here. So yesterday, you know, you talked a little bit about the game, how Pfeiffer was pretty well coached. They had a pretty good game. They had season highs and hits, runs, and also tied season highs for doubles, triples, and home runs hit. Last game against the Knights, a lot of that due to the coaching of Craig Bolton entering his ninth season with the Pfeiffer Falcons. He himself was a player for the Falcons. So Pfeiffer, as you know, we kind of talked about, played really well yesterday. They definitely made limited mistakes yesterday. I think the only mistake there was only maybe one error of the of the full game, um, and that was made that first hit of the of the game. It was definitely hard to judge due to that to that win, like we've said. There was a play at first where the second baseman threw it over to the first baseman. It was a little throw. It was a little low, the throw, and it looked as if the first baseman had dropped it. But other than that, the Falcons did play very well, executed well for that first win of the series. This is Stockton Hall at bat. He takes a big cut. Four strike, number one. As he hits a ball to the third baseman. And there was a fielding error on the third baseman, allowing Stockton Hall to reach first base. Would have been a close play at first. It was a slow chopper to the third baseman and just a slight fielding error. That pitch is thrown fairly hard for a ball number one, two, Nick Danes. As that pitch is fouled straight back into the parking lot, bringing that count at 1 1. Stockton Hall is still at first base. Another foul ball by Danes with that count of one two. Were you were you much of a sports player growing up? Baseball or anything? Uh played a little football I guess. Never really gone to baseball that much. 
as the next pitch was delivered low for that count two or two. As that pitch, what looked to be an off-speed pitch, Danes on it, fouled it straight back, keeping that count the same two and two. As that ball is lifted, and it just keeps carrying. As the center fielder makes the catch right at the wall. Pretty good catch by the center fielder for the Falcons. As his back was on the wall, quite literally making the catch what would have been a two-run home run. That was number six, Zach Farrell, who made that catch. And that first pitch being a strike one for Mitch Smith, the 0-1 count. That was a pretty good catch, considering how close what he was to that wall. I know this can be a little difficult with Perry McClure not having a, a warning track. And that ball is hit. Very softly with a bad throw made by the pitcher to the first baseman, allowing Mitch Smith to reach second on an E1 and Stockton Hall remaining at third, reaching third base from that error. Knights with one out, hoping to reach home and to get that lead early in the ball game. Marcelino Leonardo now at bat for the Knights here. As he hits a chopper to third baseman, fields it, makes the throw across as Marcelino is retired at first, leaving Mitch Smith and Stockton Hall at second and third without two outs here at the bottom of the second. Looks like it's bringing Benji Horsley up. Looking to get a hit and bring in a few runs for the Knights as the Falcons also look to retire a very good hitter and get out of here with a scoreless inning. As Benji looks for a ball one. That's ball two. And then that pitch was brought in for an off speed strike with the count of two one. Another ball outside with that count of three and one. Not sure what Benji is looking for right here, if he's wanting to reach or if he'll take a big hack if his pitch is there. And he gets walked due to a ball outside, bringing up ball four. Loaded bases for the Knights. This was probably the first time, this is the first time that the bases have been loaded in, in the series for the Knights. As the Falcons, they had, their bases were loaded yesterday, I believe, five times. So here's Stimpin at bat. Takes ball one. Slightly high for Stimpin. And then another ball bringing that at a 2-0 count. 
pitcher for the Falcons. Looks to be struggling a little bit on the mound to find that zone. Looking for a easy play for the infielders to get out of this inning. And a big cut by Robbie Stempen. And another ball thrown by Falcons pitcher number 11. Looking for a walk here to score a run. And that's ball four bringing Stockton Hall home for run number one. Loading those bases up again. Stepping on first, Horsley second, Smith on third with Lloyd up to bat here at the top of the lineup for the Knights. Thad Lewis hasn't let anyone walk, but two in a row now allows the Knights to score. As that is ball one for Lloyd. As the pitch was fouled, straight back hitting the top of a building. Bring that count at 1-1 one, one for Lloyd. That pitch was ball two. As that pitch, what seemed to look like it hit off Lloyd's leg or foot, creating a foul ball for strike number two. That count at one and two. Two strikes, two outs. Lewis with the chance to end the night here and retire him to the dugout. Another foul ball hit towards the Falcons' dugout. Filled it quite nice by the Falcons. It looks to be a coach over there. Filled it nicely. And a big swing and a miss by Lloyd, bringing that third out with loaded bases for the Knights. Sure Lewis is quite happy about that outing. Only one one run scored out of that. I'll say for Lewis, that had been stressful. I mean, you got bases loaded, two outs. You either retire the Knights back to the dugout or you let up some runs. So only managing one there. Probably a relief for the Falcons here. For sure. Leaving that ball game at Falcons zero, Knights one. Geertsen coming back out for the Knights. So now with the Knights on the board, probably relieving a little bit of pressure for them. I guess, you know, you having experience on with baseball, you know, how does having, you know, the first points on the board kind of affect your approach to the rest of the game? You know, for me, it really sets the tone in the dugout and on the field. You know, you kind of play with a little chip on your shoulder. You want to, you know, keep extending that lead, and it feels real nice. Once you have that lead, it feels nice to keep it. Um, it's never it's never a good feeling to, to come down from the bottom, you know, and have to come down from a, a losing deficit. So it's definitely something you want to keep adding to and, and, and to keep. It's a, it's a great feeling. It creates a, for a better atmosphere within the dugout. Um, and stuff like that. And that's and honestly, that's with any sport, in my opinion. 
uh, you always want to keep that lead. So Austin Wood will start at bat for this inning for the Pfeiffer Falcons. This pitch one is underway for Geertsen. She is brought in for ball one. That Mets next pitch is a strike, bringing that count at 1-1 one, one for Geertsen. And a great pitch by Geertsen, a little inside for the umpire's liking, bringing that count at two and one. And a big swing and a miss by the Falcons right-handed hitter with that count at two and two. So the hitter does everything to protect himself. As that pitch is fouled back, keeping that count the same two and two. And another foul ball by the Falcons hitter. I will say there's no easy out for the Falcons. They, they they do foul off a lot of pitches, making it for a hard out at the plate. Another foul ball. But count two and two. And another foul ball straight back. You can hear the Falcons dugout pretty eager to get Wood on base here. As he hits a ball into right, as the right fielder Ty Martinez makes a great catch in right field, diving and making the play, creating for out number one for the Knights. Great at bat by Wood for the Falcons. It's now a bat for Pfeiffer's number 10, Robbie Brown. Brown, the graduate student from Charleston, South Carolina. He takes first pitch for a strike for an 0-1 count. And that pitch was fouled again. Bringing that count at 0-2, exactly where Gerritsen wants him to be. As the batter tries everything he can to reach first base. And that pitch was a slightly high, count one and two. A uh, big swing and a miss by the hitter, creating that out number two for the Knights. So we'll return to the top of the batting order for the Falcons here with Zach Farrell coming back up at bat. I believe this is the center fielder. Made it last inning made that great catch. Keeping that that score zero to zero. Which now looks like he reached first base due to hit by pitch. bringing him to first base and bringing another left-handed batter, the first baseman, up for the Falcons. 
Weston Lore, as we mentioned before, able to hit two home runs last game. Scoring a double and a triple home run. As he fouls off a pitch very hard towards the Knights dugout, nearly hitting one of the players. For strike number one, the 0 1 count here in the top of the third inning. The top of the third inning here with two outs as Geertsen looks to retire. Very good hitter. As that pitch is brought in at a 1 1 count for a ball. And that next pitch was a ball. Ran that count two and one as Stimpin looked to try and get the runner at first due to a big lead. Was not worth the throw. A pickoff by Geertsen to Hall. Runner safe at first. And that pitch was a chopper to Mitch Smith to Stockton Hall for out number three as it retires the, the Falcons with a pretty dry inning for the Falcons as they look to put some runs on the board. And we are here at the bottom of the third inning. Still remaining at Falcons zero, Knights one. Looks like the same pitcher will come out for the Falcons. I will say it feels like we were just out here. <laughs> you know, for the game being at two yesterday, we got done probably round five yesterday. And it being, let's see, the time it's 12.42. Game time was at 12 today. It feels like we were just out here. I think it's nicer that the wind isn't as brutal and strong as it was yesterday. As it looks like it's oppositely, opposite coming coming in from the opposite way today. So we have Ty Martinez leading off the Knights at bat this inning. That first pitch is thrown for a ball for ball number one for Martinez. And pitch number two thrown in for a strike for a 1-1 one -one count for Martinez. And a big cut by Martinez, fouling that off. For a one-two count. A lot of bumblebees out here today. They don't sting or anything, but quite annoying. One unfortunate side effect of good weather. And another fly ball out for Ty Martinez. 
made by number six, the center fielder for the Falcons. Another deep ball hit by him. And another play made by the center fielder. Through a tire Martinez for out number one of the inning, bringing up Garrett Stauffer, known as G on the team. That's one of his nicknames. He takes ball one, 1-0 one -oh count. G does have a cousin on the team, Braden Stauffer, tra transferring in from Walla Walla uh, from Washington. As that pitch is lifted up in the infield, that third baseman retiring Stauffer for out number two. It's a unique situation that the Cousins have playing on the field together. As Braden Stauffer, the cousin, is a pitcher here for the Knights who may see the field today. As that pitch is lifted up for Stockton Hall and the right fielder making that catch did not have to run terribly far for a very dry inning for both the Falcons and the Knights bringing us to the top of the fourth inning. That was Robbie Brown with the catch for the Falcons to close out the inning. Score still zero to one in favor of the Knights. So I've been thinking about that at bat song, whatever you call it. Okay, the walk up walk song. Walk on song, yeah, walk up song. We need a drum roll please from the viewers. <laughs> I don't know, this is a Kind of a process, like, I don't know, usually I like country music. Okay. Like, I don't feel that's the vibe for walk-up music. So, I don't know, I was thinking, you know, like, Money Machine by 100 Gex, that type of stuff? I think that's kind of my <laughs> vibe. <laughs> I can't I can't say that I know what that is, but I'll take your word for I it. Is like, it like a fast pace, like... It's like hyper-pop. I know, it looks like some people in the booth know what I'm talking about, yeah. <laughs> For your viewers out there, I don't know if I'd recommend it, but <laughs> that's the kind of vibe I'm going for at that. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's it's really whatever whatever floats your boat, whatever gets you hyped up for that at bat. I don't know. It's not a good song, but I feel like it gets the people going. <laughs> so it looks like Joe Javier will be returning to bat for the Falcons here to start off the top of the fourth. As that was a low ball for bringing the count at 1-0 here at the top of the fourth. Game is going by fairly quick due to quick innings. And that was uh, another ball by Gerritsen. Bring that count at 2-0. and oh. As that pitch is fouled way off into the parking lot of the school. Bring that count at 2-1. and one. Seems to be like there's some activity here at the high school. Lots of cars in the parking lot. Not sure what's going on there. That brings the count at three and one for another ball in there. And for strike number two, bring that count, or full count. By Geertsen. Batter is looking for his pitch and to stay alive here. The full count for the Falcons. As he fouls a ball off out of play again. And that 
pitch is in the dirt, blocked up nicely by Stimpin, allowing that runner to reach first base due to a walk by Geertsen. So now we'll see C.J. Costa at bat for Pfeiffer. Costa actually leads the team and base is stolen, which hasn't really been a factor today so far. But something to keep your eye out on. And that pitch was brought in for ball number one. And another ball thrown by Geertsen. That count two and two. And a pick off by Geertsen. That runner is safe at first. As a pitch is fouled off again. That count two and one. Here with no outs, the top of the fourth. The runner on first, the Knights looking for a double play ball. As another pitch is fouled off, creating a 2-2 count for the Falcons hitter. As time was called by the behind the plate umpire. This pitch coming. As that pitch is fouled off Marcelino and Horsley off to get it as it is out of play. That count remaining at two and two for the hitter for the Falcons. With no outs for the Falcons, they look to tie this ball game, get some runs on the board fairly quickly. As another foul ball. Leaving that count at two and two. And a big swing and a miss by that hitter who faced a quite, quite many pitches for that at bat um, against Geertsen. Geertsen retiring that runner for out number one. The runner at first still. And it's a ball one. Leave that count at one and oh, one out here. As that pitch is another ball, what looked to be a strike, very close in the in this zone for a count of 2 0. Gerritsen looking to get a ground ball for his for his infield on that next pitch was brought in by a strike for count 2 1. It's a very trustworthy infield, I would say. Lots of veterans. Another pickoff by Gerritsen, leaving that runner safe at first. Looking for a double play ball to get out of this inning. And another ball with 
creating a 3-1 count here for Falcons. Right-handed batter. And that's a big swing and a miss, bringing in a full count for the batter and Geertsen. It's a big pitch here. Bringing in a walk will out for runners at first and second with less than two outs. The runner steals. The throw down. So it looks like Javier tried to steal a base right there, so that will be two outs in one play. So the Knights will go back to the dugout. Interesting series of events right there. It almost looked like the batter got in the way of the throw somewhat. But the Falcons will take the field and warm up a little bit before we get back underway. So Falcons ending that series with an attempted steal on base. The Falcons coming into this game had 37 steals on 47 attempts compared to the Knights 10 steals on 11 attempts. So the Falcons you know, stealing bases is a little bit more part of their game than the Knights, but as, you know, we mentioned, not so far a factor here today. There was the first attempt right there. Looks like Thad Lewis will return to the mound for the Falcons here. Knights still up 1-0. So, so far today, both teams only getting one hit on the ball. Much different from what we saw yesterday in the series. It was very different, very, very different. Combined 26 runs scored yesterday on both teams. Only one so far here, almost halfway through. So we got Nick. Nick Dane's up to bat for the Knights. He sees the first pitch for a ball. And that next pitch is brought in for a ball. Bring that count at 2-0 for Dane's. As he fouls a pitch off into the parking lot. Bring that count two and one for Danes. Pfeiffer's bullpen looks to be, seems to be getting loose. The football, a little bit different type of warming up. And that hit is hit well down the line. What ends up being a foul ball for Danes. Bringing that count at two and two. Looks like that's number seven, Jordan Bird, warming up in the bullpen. And that ball was hit very well by Danes. And the center fielder laying out for a spectacular catch out in center field. What would have been probably either a stand-up double or possibly even a triple which would have been difficult here at Perry McClure, which is not the biggest of fields. But with this Dane speed, he may have could have reached. So Farrell with a couple of spectacular grabs here today. That is strike one for Mitch Smith. Seems like the wind's starting to pick up a little bit right now. A big swing and a miss by Smith. Bringing that count at 0 and 2. And 
And a, another interesting play. The ball was hit. Not the hardest. What may have could have been turned into an out for the Falcons, but the ball was hit up the middle and hit second base, changing directions of the shortstop, creating for an infield single by Smith. Same thing happened yesterday. Ball was hit, hits first base, changing the direction of the first baseman, leading into a hit for the Knights. That brings up Marcelino, just takes ball one for a 1-0 count with one out. Having Smith at first, Marcelino takes another very high inside pitch for ball two. And that count is two and one as Marcelino watches for that strike go by. As he is just hit by the pitch. And that brings Marcelino at first. Smith at second with one out, bringing Benjamin Horsley up to bat, looking for a hit to bring in a few runs. So if you're Lewis, you know, you're in this situation, you got a couple people on base, you're wondering if it goes on through a head like last time, you know, lets up a ball, gets the bases loaded. Wonder if the pressure is on for Thad Lewis here. His next pitch is underway. It's going to be a coach's meeting to calm down Lewis, pitcher for the Falcons. This brings up Benji Horsley. As he hits a ball, what seems to be close to fair, it flies out over the foul territory, creating four. Strike one for Horsley with a 0 1 count. As he looks at ball one for 1 1 count. And another hit by pitch. Looks as if the ball went pretty quickly inside for Horsley. Gets hit in the foot, or ankle, or leg of some sort. But reaches by hit by pitch. And that loads the bases for the second time today for the Knights. This is an interesting situation. Stempton was at bat last time this situation happened. Was able to get a ball. Have the night score on a on a walk off. So we'll see if the same if history repeats itself here today. And a big swing and a miss by Stimpin for strike number one. Does it show how many uh, RBIs Stimpin has of the year? And it looks as if a foul ball is hit by Stimpin, making a play for the first baseman for out number two with bases loaded, bringing up top of the lineup for the Knights. Lloyd, as Lewis again is in the same exact 
situation as previously done in the game. Hoping to get out of this scoreless again. As Lloyd looks at strike one. And that's a wild pitch that will send send in a runner for the Knights. Looks like that was number 20, Mitch Smith, able to get on home plate, make the night score 2 nothing, Leaving that count still the same. One more ball. That count is 2-1 for Lloyd. And another wild pitch, creating for Marcelino to score. With that lead now increasing to 3-0 for the Knights. As Lewis is definitely shaken up somewhat as a pitching change may be near as the bullpen for the, as a hit. Ball is lifted pretty fairly far as the out is made for, by the left fielder. By the left fielder for the Falcons. Looks like that'll be 27 CJ Acosta with that grab there. So that will send the Knights back to the dugout. But an interesting turn of events there for the Falcons. Now Knights are up 3 nothing. None of those runs scored off of hits. Those are all up of Errors such as you know walk offs and you know just pitching errors. So we'll see if the Falcons kind of switch it up on the mound next time they're uh, in the field. But it looks like the Knights are going to keep their pitcher in the game for now, Zach Gearston. Here at the top of the fifth, game is going by pretty quick. You know, kind of talked about, you know, the unusual practices that the bullpen of Pfeiffer was doing over there. You know, they're throwing around the football. And so I know one famous former baseball player used to do that, Nolan Ryan, he used to like throwing around the football for practice for the Texas Rangers. He said, you know, throwing that football, you know, it's really big. So by the time, you know, you're throwing the baseball, it just feels so small. It's like a golf ball. So it's much easier to get a good pitch on that. Yeah, I've heard that from many, and I know some of the Knights – they do that also. You just don't see it as often. But I guess if it if it works, it works. You know, it still warms up those those parts of the arm that need to be warmed up. That Gerritsen delivers with a ball for ball one with a one zero count. So that wind is picking up here in Buena Vista, Virginia, as that pitch is fouled. Off in the foul territory for 1-1 one, one count. As another foul ball for the batter for the Falcons. Bringing that count at 1-2 as Gerritsen looks to retire this batter. And another foul ball made in made the catch in foul territory. It looks like on the run by Benji Horsley for out number one for the Knights. So Barnes goes back to the dugout for the Falcons, and Turner now comes up at bat. Josh Turner, the junior from Greensboro. And a big cut, big swing and a miss. Bring that count at 0 and 1. And another swing and a miss by Turner, creating for an 0 2 count. 
Turner was struck out last time he was at bat, so we'll see if Gearston's able to do this again. Already has four strikeouts on the day so far. As he goes to the off speed for the 0-2 count and throws for a ball, bringing that count at one and two. And a very closely knitted ball thrown by Gerritsen. Wasn't close enough, leaving that count at two and two. Next pitch underway very soon by Geertsen. And that pitch is lifted to center. And the catch was made by Geertz by Geertsen center fielder Danes. Four out, number two. And we're back as that last batter was retired by Danes. This is Austin Wood at bat. As another ball by Gerritsen was thrown. Hoping to retire the batter and get out of this inning. Top of the fifth here. Let's see what the Knights get if they can add to that lead. And another big swing and a miss. There's Gearson's fifth strike out of the day now. And it seems as if Lewis is coming back on the mound for the Falcons. Indeed, that is Lewis. Another fresh inning for the pitcher as it shows a lot of trust from the coaches for him. But he can bounce back. That Lewis with a 62 pitch count right now, letting up two hits and three runs here. One strikeout. Three airs and two, two walks here at the top of the fifth. So the Knights here, up three, still holding the Falcon scoreless, looking to kind of split this series so far. Last year when these two teams faced off, the Falcons won all the games. The year before that, the Knights were able to lead the series with a 2-1 series lead over the Falcons. So we'll see how this series shapes up this season. As pitch number one for Martinez is a long fly ball. And Martinez is retired for out number one, made play being made by the left fielder for the Falcons. Fairly routine play that brings up Garrett G. Stauffer for the Knights. As he hits a ball to third base as he makes the throw across the diamond retiring retiring Stauffer at third base who jumps on the first pitch fairly quickly creating two outs just as a snap of a finger. Two pitches for Lewis so far and two outs off of fielding. As Lewis comes in for strike one for Stockton Hall. Boy. 
And strike number two. As Lewis definitely comes back out. Definitely bounced back and is looking much better. As he does allow a hit by Stockton, a little blooper over second base. Not allowing the shortstop to make the play. Allowing Stockton to reach first base. So what's the break in between games? Probably 20 minutes, about 30 minutes. And then that ball is hit to the right fielder who makes the grab at the fence. Another closely hit home run by Danes and retires that inning. Lewis definitely a lot better outing for that round. So Some clear throwing. confidence booster here at the top of the sixth for the Falcons. We'll see if they're able to carry that over to the bat. And that was Robbie Brown with that last catch to close off the inning for the fight for Falcons. And Robbie Brown will also be Starting off at bat for Pfeiffer here in the sixth inning. Pfeiffer, as we mentioned last game, was able to score 19 runs off of 17 hits. So being down three to zero, you know, in one way, you know, kind of must feel shaken up a little bit. Six innings in, you haven't scored yet. Down three, nothing, but. You know, this team is more than capable of coming back and overcoming this deficit. Definitely. And that was shown yesterday. They just kept adding points to the board as they would take advantage of any slight mistake made by the Knights, any hit showing very well -y gifted on the base path and very well executed and coached by the head coach and the coaches by the Falcons yesterday. This brings up pitch one. And for a ball for Geertsen, bring that count at one and oh for the right-handed batter Brown for the Falcons. And a big swing and a miss. Bring that count one and one for Brown. And look to be a ball. Bring that count at two and one for Brown, who has one at bat for the day and was a strikeout by Geertsen. Geertsen comes in with a strike, creating a two two count for the Falcons right handed batter, Brown. Looking to retire him here. And that is ball three. It was low and outside. And that Brown was retired. The right fielder for the Falcons was retired by Mitch Smith in foul territory. Or out number one for the Knights. Return to the top of the batting order for the Falcons here. We'll see Zach Farrell at bat again. As the center fielder takes first pitch for strike number one. And 
another pitch thrown in there for a ball, creating a 1-1 count here for Farrell. And ball two, bringing that count at 2-1. Here at the top of the sixth. And that brings up ball three for Geertsen. And that is ball four, which allows the Farrell to reach first which I believe last at bat he reached by either hit by a pitch or a walk. And that brings up the very good hitter, the first baseman for the Falcons. So here comes Weston Lohr up at bat for the Falcons. And that ball hit very high and lifted up what Martinez thought could have been a out number two the ball carried in a foul territory leading for a long strike strike number one oh one count as that pitch is hit straight back to Geertsen with a fairly easy thing play for Geertsen as he throws it to the shortstop Seth Lloyd and he drops it, picks it up very quickly before the runner. Farrell reached second, ready for out number two, leaving that That runner's safe at first for the Falcons. As that next pitch is brought in for an off-speed strike by Gerritsen for an 0-1 count with two outs here at the top of the sixth. And strike number two. For a 2 count as Gearson looks to get the Knights out of this top of the sixth. It's another scoreless inning. As what looked to be an attempted steal by number 28, the runner for the Falcons at first. Possible hit and run if the ball was fouled off by by Javier up to bat. And a ball. A long run made by Martinez to retire the Falcons. Martinez called off Danes to get that third out for the Knights retiring the Falcons to bring up the bottom of the sixth inning. Falcons still scoreless here. It looks like Lewis remains as the pitcher here. The Knights enter this game with a 1-6 conference record. Pfeiffer with a 2-5 conference record. So a win right here will tie them up in the conference standings. Yeah, 
big win for the Knights as they battle out for for game three. Taking a quick glance at the conference standings, Brevard so far in the lead with a 6-1 record in the conference. NC Wesleyan, though, 5-2 right behind them is ranked number 18 in the nation. And Lewis is back out there for the Falcons again, showing the trust they have in him as he did have a good bottom of the fifth as it brings up Mitch Smith, who check swings a strike down the middle for strike one for an 0-1 count here for Smith. As an almost identical check swing, a little bit lower of a pitch, credit for 0-2 count for Smith as Lewis goes to dig deep here and to try to get this First leadoff out for the inning. As Smith pops up, what looks to be the shortstop is under it. And yes, the shortstop makes the out to retire Smith for the first out of the bottom of the sixth. And that brings up Marcelino Leonardo Jr. with the rare walk-up song that gets the crowd interested. And the shortstop fields, fields it quite easily with a routine ground ball thrown across the diamond, retiring Marcy. Marcy out at first. Throws a little high. It looked as if the first baseman was going to have to jump, but just extended, creating for that out number two for the Knights. And a big swing and a miss by Horsley. And the Falcons have two outs here against the Knights with an 0-1 count for Lewis going right at Horsley. And that creates a 0-2 count again. As Lewis looks to retire, Horsley. And a foul ball, keeping that count at 0-2. Pitch underway. As that ball is lifted up into right field, as the right fielder makes the play, routine fly ball hit by Horsley. Creating for that third out. Fairly quick inning. Another quick inning by Lewis who I would assume would go back out for the bottom of the seventh here as we are at the top of the seventh with Gerritsen back out there on the mound for the Knights. What's your opinion on, on this song, Take Me Out to the Ball to the ball Game? I mean, it's a classic. Like, is it really a baseball game if you don't play it? Yeah, I could agree with you on that. I don't know about this arrangement, but, like. <laughs> like I said, it's a classic. You got to play it at least once. I do like the song when they play. It's like the pump it up, pump it up. You know that song where they do like that? No, I can't say that I do. 
Yeah, there's like this, there's a certain song that a lot of colleges play, and it's like a pump it up, and it's just they they do this certain dance, and I'm not really sure they they don't do it here, so. So this is C.J. Acosta at bat for the Falcons. Acosta's been struck out once today already. As he takes a big swing, fouls it off, creating that count at one and one. Here at the top of the seventh. As a ball hit fairly well in right field as Martinez gets it, throws it in. Fielded by Lloyd, leaving for a stand-up double by Acosta. Bringing up Lackey for the Falcons with a runner on second and no outs which could set up for a big inning for the Falcons here as they look to cut that lead down that the Knights have here at the top of the seventh. 3-0 lead. Gearson approaching 100 pitches. He's only let up so far two hits today. So a much needed hit by Acosta right there. This is Corey Lackey at bat right now for Pfeiffer. And a good block by Stipp and the catcher to leave that runner at second for the Falcons. Leave him there, remaining there. And strike one for Geertsen as the count is two and one. Looks as if bullpen for both the Falcons and the Knights are waking up as Chase Smith is warming up for the Knights. Brother of Mitch Smith, second baseman. And strike number two thrown in there for Geertsen, creating a 2-2 count here for Lackey. As a full count is brought to us now. And a big swing and a miss by Lackey. Bringing up first out for the Knights as they look for out number two, bringing out Barnes for the Falcons. And that ball is fouled straight back for the per first pitch strike. And pitch two coming our way, which was very high by Geertsen, creating that one on one count. And a, another low ball. By Gerritsen with a 2-1 count here trying to retire the batter for out number two for the Knights. As the Falcons are set up in a fairly good situation here. As that ball is fouled off into the parking lot again. Bringing that count at 2-2 two and two with a runner on second. As the Falcons look to score their first run here at the bottom, top of the seventh inning. And ball three 
for another full count for Geertsen. Not sure if he's getting slightly tired or not due to his pitch count being up in the triple digits now. And a swing and a miss by Barnes. Not ideal for the Falcons and not what they are looking for as their runner number 27 is still at second base bringing up Turner the right handed batter for the Falcons Josh Turner even struck out once today strike one for Geertsen Geertsen definitely battling out there on the mound for the Knights. He's given the Falcons lots of various different pitches. As strike two is brought in there by Geertsen for the 0-2 count. And that's a high off-speed pitch by Garrison bringing that at 1-2 count. Um, Zach Garrison. And a foul ball hit by Turner, keeping that count at 1-2. And another high pitch with a 2-2 count. As a ball is lifted up, hit fairly well. And Ty Martinez is under it for out. Number three. Here at the top of the seventh, another scoreless inning for the Knights. So the Falcons able to get Acosta on base there, but nothing able to come to fruition as they still remain scoreless here in the seventh inning. So we'll see if Thad Lewis comes back out for Pfeiffer here or if they decide to change things up here for the final two innings. Final three, I should say. So it looks like Lewis will return to the mound here for the Pfeiffer Falcons. Current pitch count at 76, letting up three hits, three runs, three airs, two walks, and a strikeout. Both pitchers showing a lot of depth, a lot of trust, both throwing very well today, leading in a low scoring game, keeping it not easy for either teams. Although Lewis did have a, what was it, two bad innings, two innings there that there were some walks in there allowing for those few runs scored. Yeah, a couple, couple of tricky innings there for Lewis allowing the Knights to score. All three of their runs have been earned by the Knights. Toughly earned, so like we said, low scoring game. Definitely one of those games where whoever makes the least amount of errors is gonna come up on top. Exactly. And so far that's been the Knights, haven't made a single error so far. Almost perfect game, only two hits for the Knights they've let up. 
as it looks like Stempin is up for the Knights here at the bottom of the seventh as he takes strike one. And takes another pitch, which is a ball for a 1-1 count here for Stippen, the catcher for the Knights. And takes another high pitch, the 2-1 count. Two one count pitch underway soon. And Stimpin takes another pitch with a 2-2 count. Ball's thrown in there for a strike. And another ball thrown there by Lewis. Bring that count at full count for Stimpin, 3-2 count. Stippen looking to reach the base. As he takes a big cut, which may be in for the catcher. Catcher had a very difficult play, which it looked as if he could have made the play May have been out and came back in with that that type the back spin the ball was produced off the bat. We could not get the job finished behind the plate, leaving at a full count for Stimpin. Leaving for a hit by pitch. Hit by a pitch, Robbie Stimpin. So return to the top of the batting order here. Seth Lloyd now at bat for the Knights. As we mentioned before, Seth Lloyd had a pretty good batting day yesterday against the Falcons. And a strike one by Lloyd, who was attempted to bunt with a pinch runner, David Hundley, at first in place of Robbie Stimpin. David Hundley with some speed on first base is, looks to another bunt. Another bunt laid down by Seth Lloyd. The third baseman comes to get it, trying to let it go foul. No third baseman was at third, and Hundley takes advantage of the miscommunication by the Falcons. There we go. Looks like the stands are definitely alive now, as well as the Knights' dugout. Excited about that play. As the Knights are not a full bunting team, not a very rare bunting team as Seth Lloyd as Seth Lloyd does lay down the perfect bunt, as the Falcons thought it'd go out, foul. As this leads to a first and third situation with a very good hitter, Martinez down up to bat. As he has a 0-2 count here. And also as the bullpens are both awake still with Pitchers in each bullpen warming up here at Perry McCore High School. And a hit by Martinez bringing in David Hundley to score, leaving Lloyd at third base, reaching from first. So after both teams struggling to 
consistently hit the ball. The Knights, with a couple of consecutive hits, able to get a run off of that. Starting to open things up here at the bottom of the seventh, no outs. Looks like a timeout will be called. Looks like maybe a pitching change. Looks as if 42 was brought in for the Falcons. That is Sam Odom, the sophomore from Lexington, North Carolina who is stepping in place for Thad Lewis. Odom with a 9.28 ERA on the season so far. So we'll see if this switch up here in the seventh inning will start to shut off the Knights here as they begin to gain some momentum on the batting side. See if that momentum can carry over for the Falcons here. Needing to shut out the Knights. Hopefully close this gap. Not sure if you follow the SVU volleyball team. I know that they are they're in New Jersey this weekend playing at some tournament, big tournament out there. I believe that they moved up to the number one team in the nation for the D3 level, which is quite interesting and big for the Southern Virginia Knights. Who says that, Rowan? What was that? The school they're playing, is that Rowan? Um, I'm not totally sure. I know Rowan up in New Jersey, they have a pretty good volleyball program. So I believe, I believe that the number one team lost and I think we were either two or three, which pushed us to one. And pitch number one underway, which brings up a new batter, Ben Agnew, who had a single yesterday when he was a pinch hitter as he sees ball number one as he is in a situation to do some good to bring out and add to some RBIs. As we have Martinez at first and Lloyd at third. Pick off by the pitcher for the Falcons to keep Martinez remained at first. Real speed at first by Martinez. And ball at number two for Agnew as Agnew looks for a good pitch to sit on and drive here to bring in Seth. And depending on where the pitch is at, hit possibly Martinez with, as he sees strike number one for a 2-1 count here at the bottom of the seventh inning. As Agnew fouls off the pitch making it a 2-2 count. Agnew with a very positive outlook on everything for the SVU, SVU Knights baseball squad, the returning sophomore, as he sees a ball where he seemed to check swing and was called out for the strikeout. Not sure if that 
call was made by the home plate umpire or or who the first the first base umpire another pickoff by the pitcher quite an interesting call by Agnew there having one out here and a strike was thrown in there for Stockton Hall an 0-1 count here looking to extend that lead again as he hits a pitch and ends up being a foul ball pokes at it trying to score that runner at third and to extend Martinez to second as the new pitcher for the Falcons just looks at getting that second out as the outfield looks to shift for the Falcons very close pitch made by the Falcons pitcher bringing that count at one and two And another ball for Falcons pitcher Odom, bringing that count at two and two. Looking as if it's taken him a little longer time to settle in here for the Falcons. And that brings up a full count, three and two. As there was a lot of action for the Knights with that bunt. The extra base by Hunley, hit by pitch by Stimpin. As Hall drives the ball, drives the ball. Catch was made by the center fielder, number six, who looks to be a little hurt in the leg of some sort. Looks like Seth Boyd was able to slide in at home. Make the score 5-0 for the Knights. Leaving Ty Martinez at first base with Nick Danes up to bat. And that's a big swing and a miss by Danes. Danes hasn't really caught a break today having two bombs hit but both being caught and another fly ball caught by the left fielder deep left field to retire Nick Danes very talented and gifted hitter for the Knights so Zach Farrell and CJ Costa able to get those two catches there to send the Knights back to the dugouts so a little pitching change here in the seventh inning. Nice able to put up one more run to extend their lead to five nothing here against the Falcons. So Sam Odom completing his first inning of the game here today. Doesn't have as much playing time as some of their other pitchers for Pfeiffer. Coming into this game, Thad Lewis with 19 inning plays, Jake Blevins with 22 innings played, and Ivan Delp with 25. Sam Odom only with 10. So we'll see what the sophomore he does here today. See if he's able to keep the Knights lead to a minimum as the Falcons now coming up bat, hoping to close that margin. New pitcher for the Knights, Chase Smith, number 21, he comes in. Great game pitch by Geertsen. Pitch count was high. Definitely saving him for the incoming 
near in the future games next week for the Knights. Smith out of Utah, Leighton. Dad is assistant coach Dave Smith. For the Knights, as we are at the top of the eighth here, looking, and that's a strike one for Smith as he comes in hot and newly ready for the Knights. And strike two, which is a long foul ball with Wood up to bat for the Falcons. As we look to retire and strike out on three pitches by Smith, who is locked and loaded for the game and all about the business on the mound right now. And a fairly easy ground ball by Marcelino. Throws across the diamond to Stockton Hall. Creating for out number two. Two outs with four pitches by Smith. Getting it done on the mound. That brings up the top of the lineup. Center fielder, number six. For the Falcons. And that is strike number one. And that pitch is a ball for count one and one for Smith. And that ball hit fairly well, very well. Ball was touched. And that ball is out of here by a good ways. Zach Farrell with the home run, giving the Falcons their first points of the day. And bringing that score to one to five. And that'll bring up Weston Lohr, who had a big day at bat yesterday Hasn't seen much today. So we'll see if the Falcons are able to keep up this momentum. Another foul ball for that Falcons left-handed hitter. And that ball is hit to Mitch Smith, fielded nicely to Stockton Hall for out number three. Fairly quick inning, somewhat of a big inning for the Falcons, scoring one from that home run. Looks like Odom will take them out again for the Falcons. But yeah, quick inning. But you know, that was a pretty big break for the Falcons here now on the board, and that has to you have to let out a sigh of relief there if you're five for after eight innings of nothing, able to finally get some points on the board. You still got one inning left. So the game not too far out of reach. Not sure what pitch was hit by the center fielder on that home run, but it was definitely hit well. So 
Zach Farrell having a good day on both sides of the ball. He's made a bunch of spectacular catches in the outfield today, playing that center field position, and now has the lone home run for the Falcons here today so far. I'd like to remind the audience that today is a double header. We'll have game two shortly after the conclusion of today's game. This is a production of Knights Broadcasting. So please like and subscribe and maybe leave a comment of you know, some of your favorite action today or how we can improve the fan experience back home. And thanks for all the support for all of y'all back home watching your SVU Knights or any if there's any Pfeiffer fans out there, we thank you as well. And a big swing and a miss by, looks to be Mitch Smith at the plate for the Knights. And Odom delivering that first pitch strike. And another strike for Odom, bringing that count 0-2. Wild pitch by Odom, bringing that count one and two here at the bottom of the eighth. And a wild pitch again by Odom, bringing that count two and two. Almost hit Smith and the helmet, it seemed. Very quick velocity. And fouled off by Smith. Leaving that count at two and two. And another foul ball by Smith. And a ball hit hard to shortstop for the Falcons. Routine ground ball. Makes the throw to first base for out number one for the Falcons. Retiring Smith. Bringing up Marcelino Leonardo Jr. Big swing, foul ball for Marcy. Bringing that count at 0 1. Another ball from Odom. Bringing that count 1 and 1. And looked to be a check swing off of a high fastball. First base umpire ruled it. No swing. So bringing that count at two and one. Another big cut from the Dominican Marcelino Leonardo Jr. Bringing that count at two and two. And outside pitch for a full count. And Marcelino gets a hit to right field. Looks as if the first baseman went to right field now for a sub for a new first baseman. Ball was slightly misjudged. Probably could have been an out for the Falcons. Marcelino reached first base. Now gets his lead. Bringing up Benjamin Horsley. As that ball is popped up into no man's land. 
scoring a hit for Horsley, allowing for Marcy to reach second base, standing up. Allowing for a hit for Bidji Horsley. And that is looks to bring up Ryan Ferris. Who is now the catcher for the Knights. As he seemed to have wanted that first pitch, did not take it in their first strike for strike one. With the runners on second at first. As he hits the ball and hit fairly well, gets through. Marcelino makes it home. Leaving Benji Horsley at second base and Ferris reaching, reaching first base for an RBI single. Bringing up the top of the lineup, Lloyd. As that pitch is, first pitch is fouled straight back, bringing that count at one and one for Lloyd. Here at the bottom of the eighth. And that pitch is brought in for strike number two for Lloyd. Seemed to be an off-speed pitch. Knights hoping to extend that lead a little more as we head into the top of the ninth here soon. As a hit. As a hit by Lloyd scores Horsley from second base. Making that a six run lead. Leaving Ferris at second and Lloyd at first. Ball hit fairly well by Lloyd. Second baseman was in double play depth. Was not able to get there. Looks like Pfeiffer is going to take a moment to discuss some things. It's definitely looking promising for the Knights as they're hitting, hitting the ball. Maybe has some slight confusion on the mound from the Pfeiffer Falcons. That brings up Ty Martinez for the Knights. Wild pitch blocked up nicely by the catcher for the Falcons. Bringing that count 1-0 and oh for Martinez. Odom on the mound for the Falcons doing all that he can to maybe get a double play ball, get out of this bottom of the eighth inning. And Ball two, outside ball for 2-0 count. And very good swing by Martinez. So that pitch is fouled straight back. Bring that count. One and one. Another pitch fouled straight back. 
bring Zach Count one and two by for Martinez. Odom looking to retire Martinez here for out number two. Ty looking to have some RBIs, score Ferris, who's at second for the Knights. As he lays off a very, very close pitch thrown in by Odom. Credit for that 2-2 count. As that pitch is looked to be playable for the Falcons, but was in foul territory behind the fence, out of play, leaving Ty Martinez still alive with a 2-2 count from, for the Knights. And another foul ball by Martinez. And another foul ball hit by Martinez. Barely out. Martinez definitely on the pitch. Odom digging deep here for the 2-2 count. Going right at Martinez, trying to get him out. And ball three. Thrown in the dirt by Odom, bringing up a full count for him. And walked Martinez. So bases will be loaded for the Knights here. You got Martinez on first, Lloyd on second, I believe Ferris on third. Got some good players on base. Good swing by Agnew, who last at bat struck out, looking to redeem himself here. As previously, previously said, he definitely Makes every second count every day as he lifts the ball up to center field. Actually, the shortstop got under it. That's Austin Wood with the catch. So now I got two outs on the board. Let's see how Odom handles this. Got bases loaded still. Knight's been able to make a lot of contact with the ball. As Stockton watches ball one go by for a 1 0 count. As he hits a very hard ground ball right at second baseman. Sec shortstop a little late to get there. Wood makes the catch from the toss from the second baseman, securing that out number three to wrap up the eighth inning. And we are at the top of the ninth. Falcons have one more chance to tie the ball game needing to score six runs here or to secure it by scoring seven as 
Scott Smith back on the mound. If he's able to keep the Falcons five runs or under here in the ninth, he can end this game right here. So how important is a win like this today for the Knights moving forward? Um, I believe it, it's it's very important for the Knights. Um, I was able to be in Coach Sleg's, you know, ending game talk yesterday, and it sits us well. You know, if we if we win this game, it's just going to set up for the for the third game, which that's going to go for both teams. They both want to come out here with with leading this this series with two and one lead, um, but it definitely secures a better spot for conference play. Um, but I think the Knights have definitely came ready today. May have taken the Falcons a little longer to get settled in here on this game too. But it's definitely a big win for either team. And it definitely sets up for a better atmosphere, better spirit. And pitch one underway. Brought in by for a strike by Smith. For strike number one. One oh one count. Here at the top of the ninth. This is Javier at bat for Pfeiffer. As he hits a ball to shortstop, Seth Lloyd makes a quick throw. Stockton Hall extending at first, making that out number one. So Joe Javier will head back to the dugout there. But we'll see CJ Acosta come out on the plate for the fight for Falcons here. Acosta was able to hit a double last time he was at bat. And a routine play for Mitch Smith as he throws to Stockton Hall, securing out number two here at the top of the ninth. Another out here will end the game. So two quick outs for the Knights. Looks like and we have a pinch hitter of some sort for the Falcons. Big left-handed hitter for the Falcons. First at bat throughout the series as he takes first pitch for strike one as Smith goes right at him, trying to secure game two. And a big swing and a miss for the pinch hitter. And that is ball one, creating right the count one and two. Pitch underway. And what looked to be a great pitch. Not sure where that missed. Very close, a little too close to take for most. It was called a ball for a 2-2. Two -two. And another ball thrown by Smith. Bringing up a full count. This could be the last pitch of this game. And it looked as if he fouled it off for the Falcons, staying alive for this at bat. This is Jack Brandle at bat. And that is ball game, folks. Securing that win for the Knights, winning seven to one. Game three will be underway in about 30 minutes. So stay close, stay nearby to whatever devices you're watching as the Knights will host game three of this conference series against the Pfeiffer Falcons. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you soon.